Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're now listening to The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. And if you're not accustomed to the saying by now, if you don't know me, get to know me. The first thing I got to do with this episode 13 of The Blueprint is shout out the team, Buffalo Fanatics. We always trying to find ways to evolve. As you may know or may not know, we have a couple of new IG pages, Instagram pages up. The Buffalo Fanatics game room been up and running for a little while now. The Buffalo Fanatics car breaks is now up and running. We're trying to do a lot of different things to keep evolving. We're trying to do a lot of different things to keep our fans engaged. So shout out the team. If you're not subscribed on YouTube, please subscribe on YouTube so you can listen to myself. You can listen to King Rico and you can listen to everybody on the Buffalo Fanatics team. If you're not in tune to Off The Edge, my brother from another mother and father, Dave Myers, DM3, every Sunday night, he has his Facebook live pro- uh, broadcast, Off The Edge. It's some excellent content on there. It's an excellent show, and I'm really proud of my brother, DM3. Before I even get into what I really want to get into today, which is my uh, projections of the Buffalo Bills 53-man roster, I have to get into something that's not Buffalo Bills related, but it's a part of the NFL and we do dibble and dabble and engage with big news surrounding the NFL. And this right here is very big news. Andrew Luck has called it a career. Andrew Luck, the 2012 number number one overall draft pick, the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, franchise quarterback, the successor to Eli Manning, uh, excuse me, Peyton Manning, wrong Manning, there's all these Mannings that you got to worry about, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, Archie Manning, we got the kid in, uh, that's, that's playing in high school, freshman that's straight to varsity, Arch Manning, we'll get into him uh, as he progresses in through the ranks of football, but Andrew Luck has called it a career, and I'm saddened. By the news, Andrew Luck was one of my favorite quarterbacks in the NFL. We're talking about a very smart, very intellectual guy, and he wasn't he he wasn't a shit talker, right? He would get hit, and he'd be like, "Hey, good hit, buddy. Hey, that's a great hit. Hey, great job." He always respected the players on opposing teams, and he had much respect for the game of. Of the National Football League, and while I don't, I don't think he's a he's a surefire Hall of Famer, being that he only played six seasons. He was definitely a franchise quarterback. He was definitely an elite quarterback in this NFL, and it was short lived. Retiring at the age of twenty nine, he was mentally worn down. His body was worn down. If you heard his press conference, uh, he said his body was was getting tired, and he was getting tired mentally, I'm paraphrasing here, of course, of going through the rigors of rehabbing and the pain and trying to get back, and I I seen that he took a lot of grief, you see Doug Gottlieb, you see some Indianapolis Colts fans, I'm going to say some, I can't say all, but them some Indianapolis Colts fans that booed Andrew Luck, definitely take the cake, am I right? You have no business... Being critical of this man, Andrew Luck. In my opinion, nobody has no business being critical of Andrew Luck and his decision to walk away from this combative combative sport in the NFL. This is a very grueling sport where they put their bodies on the line week in and week out. And I congratulate Andrew Luck. I salute Andrew Luck for... For taking his stand and realizing that his life and his body is more important than the game he loves in football. If you want to boo anybody, if you want to blame anybody, blame the Indianapolis Colts owner, Jim Israel. I'm sorry to say, but Andrew Luck should not be the one booed here. If he's the one booed, it's definitely a travesty on your part. You should be blaming the owner. You should be blaming that organization for not giving that man the offensive line that he needed so he would be playing today. We're talking about in 2012, Andrew Luck was sacked 
41 times. 2013, he was sacked 32 times. 2014, he was sacked 27 times. 2015, he was sacked 15 times, and he only played seven games to come right back around in 2016 and get sacked 41 more times. In six seasons, Andrew Luck has been sacked an average of 29 times per season. You should not be booing that man for taking his his talents elsewhere and taking his health and his life more seriously than the Colts organization did. If there's anybody that you should be booing, it's the Indianapolis Colts organization. And I'm not trying to bash the organization purposely. I just have to call a spade a spade. If they protected this man a little bit better, Andrew Luck would be suiting up today. So I salute Andrew Luck. I salute his his courageous his courageous uh, uh, ability to, to walk away from the game as healthy as he can possibly be at the age of 29 years old. And that's all I can say about the Indianapolis Colts fans, the, the organization, and Andrew Luck himself. Moving on, I have to get on to our team, what we love the most. It is the Buffalo Bills podcast for the fans, and I have to... Uh, project i feel it's it's time you know we we played the third game of the season this past this past week against the detroit lions we end up beating the detroit lions we've we are three and oh in a season where the games don't count but it's been a long time since the buffalo bills have sported a three and oh record in the preseason and and that's that's a that shows how much of a good job that Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott is doing in, in in terms of building this roster. When you have a deep roster, when you're you have uh, deep positions along the cornerbacks and and the wide receivers and the running backs, and you revamp the offensive line, it shows a little bit in the preseason, especially when you bring your second string in against other teams' second string. The depth that we have is definitely showing, and the roster cuts that have to be made are are going to be tough decisions. If you heard. Uh, Sean McDermott's press conference, he welcomes this moment. He welcomes the tough decisions because if you have to make tough decisions in terms of your roster and your roster cuts, that means you're putting together a pretty damn good ball club. I would hope and I would think and it's starting to show a little bit in this preseason. So to kick off my A. Rich 53-man roster projections, I have to start off with the quarterback position. We're going to keep, in my opinion, two quarterbacks. I think this is easy. I think a lot would a, a lot of people would agree with me with this one. Josh Allen is the starter. He is the hopeful franchise quarterback. We, we hope that Josh Allen is the guy to take us where we want to go now and in the future. Josh Allen is the starter. Matt Barkley is... Is his backup, and he's a pretty damn good backup, if you ask me. And if you ask me, uh, Matt Barkley has played well ever since he came to one Bills drive when he played against the Jets and we blew out the Jets. I thought it was a fluke. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not a fluke. And I know, speaking of Andrew Luck and Indianapolis Colts, I know they have Jacoby Brissett and Chad Kelly, but if you're looking around the league right now, uh, Matt Barkley have to be somebody that you have to be looking at. I mean, I, I've been seeing reports with Eli Manning. I'm like, really? Let's go. We we think Eli Manning is washed up. Now we want to trade Eli Manning to the Indianapolis Colts? I don't know about that, but Matt Barkley is doing a phenomenal job in the Buffalo Bills uniform, in the Buffalo Bills organization, and he's entrenched as our backup quarterback. Two quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Matt Barkley. The running back situation. I really like our staple of running backs. I have us keeping four running backs. Shady McCoy is our starter. I know Melvin Gordon is 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 holding out. I know Lamar Miller just got hurt. But Shady McCoy, in my opinion, because it's just my opinion, I could be wrong. Uh, this podcast could be over and Shady may get traded. I highly doubt it, but you never know. Shady McCoy is the starter. He should be the featured back 
And in my opinion, he is the feature back on our team. And he does make the cut, obviously, along with Frank Gore, Delvin Singletary, Devin Singletary, and TJ Yeldon. I have TJ Yeldon making the cut. I know he fumbled his first game in the preseason, but he's obviously made up for that. He's showing his uh, versatility between the tackles. He's showing his versatility when it comes to blocking, and he's definitely showing that first versatility when it comes to running routes. He stretched out to make a, a big play, a big catch, and because of TJ Yeldon's versatility on the offensive side of the ball, not necessarily special teams. But he possessed enough versatility to warrant him a roster, a roster spot. I know Sonoris Perry is a, is a special teams catalyst. I know he does well and, and ha- is versatile on in, in that point. But I don't think he, he showed enough as a runner. I don't think he showed enough to make the squad along with Marcus Murphy. I like Marcus Murphy, but I don't think he showed enough. I think we, we are deep for a reason. And Christian Wade also will get cut. Even though I think Christian Wade is a phenomenal story, I think he's done phenomenal things with the Buffalo Bills. I think he would agree with me that he has a long way to go. He's still a little raw, but I do feel that he's the prime practice squad candidate he's not going to make the 53 man roster but i do believe he cuts the practice squad in christian wade moving on to the fullback situation we didn't bring in no competition uh for patrick demarco patrick demarco is is one of those fullbacks that we once as soon as you think the fullback position is becoming extinct you have guys like patrick demarco He's a leader, he's a veteran, and he shows his versatility in the special teams department. And I think he's going to be a mainstay with the Buffalo Bills as the fullback for our team. Going over to the wide receiver position, here's where it gets, it gets tricky for me. Here's where it gets tricky for me. I believe uh, that we're going to keep seven wide receivers. I'm not accustomed to teams keeping seven wide receivers. We usually see five receivers Make, uh, make a roster. Uh, most of the time, six receivers make the roster. But seven receivers is always a stretch. And I always thought there is no way NFL teams should be keeping seven receivers. But then I looked at my roster. <laughs> then I look at what we're doing and, and the, the, the different type of receivers we have. And I definitely think it warrants keeping seven receivers. John Brown, Cole Beasley, Zay Jones. Robert Forster, Isaiah McKenzie, Andre Roberts, and Duke Williams should all make this football team. Will they all actually make it? Who knows? Uh, There's nothing surprising me after Andre Roberts, John Brown, and Cole Beasley. There is nothing that would surprise me, but I do think these seven receivers all should be making the team. Uh, It's going to be some tough decisions. David Sills, he hasn't shown enough. I know we worked hard to get him as an undrafted free agent, but he hasn't shown enough to warrant a roster spot. I like what Ray Ray McLeod is doing, but I think Isaiah McKenzie is a little bit more explosive, and he's a little bit more refined in his routes, uh, more than Ray 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 McLeod to warrant him a roster spot. Now, if we can sneak Ray Ray on the practice squad, I think he's definitely going to be on the practice squad. I don't know. If he's going to make it there. There's teams that's desperate for a wide receiver. Even if I, in our AFC East. I think the Jets would probably love to have a Ray McLeod on their roster. I think that the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots. Would would entertain the fact of adding a Ray McLeod on the roster. So we're going to see he's going to be. He's definitely one of those tough cuts. But these seven receivers I really like to make the roster. And because we have seven receivers. I really think that we're going to hold off on the tight end position and get only uh, three tight ends makes this roster. Our seventh round pick, Tommy Sweeney, he's doing an incredible job taking uh, the most and getting the most of his opportunities. Dawson Knox, he's now coming back from a hamstring injury. I would think he play a lot in our, in our preseason finale against the Minnesota Vikings, but he's our third round pick. He, he has the speed. And he has the size to really be a mismatch nightmare. And he's a third round pick. And Lee Smith, being that he got that contract that we gave him, I think that he's he pres- uh, presents a uh, blocking element 
to our receiving to our tight end corpse, and I think he makes the team. And uh, Tyler Croft is going to start the season on the pup list. I know he's doing more. I know he's uh, ramping up his activity, but he's not quite ready to to start the season week one. And when he gets ready to start the season, who knows who we may cut uh, when that time comes. But right now, I have three tight ends making the roster. Jason Kroon. I like Jason Kroon as a... I like his athletic ability, but he just didn't do enough. Uh, I know he's been injured, and that injury that he had uh, may cost him, in my opinion, a roster spot. Moving on to the offensive line. I have nine offensive linemen making the team. I have Deion Dawkins. I have Mitch Morse. I have Cody Ford. I have Quentin Spen. I have Spencer Long. Joe Feliciano. Ty Nisecki. Uh, Ryan Bates. We won that trade, by the way, getting rid of Eli Harold. I thought uh, Ryan Bates was just a, a, a camp body, a preseason body, but he's showing a lot of versatility. He's already moved up to the second team offensive line. He's a smart kid coming out of my favorite team, college football team, Penn State, and I, I really like what he's shown, and he warrants a roster spot in uh, Ryan Bates. And last but not least, DeAndre Wesley. DeAndre Wesley, he's come, and I've seen him put the wood to some guys, and I really like him and what he's been able to bring to the table as a as a swing tackle in DeAndre Wesley. It was hard for me to cut someone like Wyatt Teller, but it's kind of telling that he was not the next man up when Quentin Spann got hurt. So I got those nine offensive linemen making the roster. Moving over to the defensive end spot, I have four defensive ends. This was uh, it was hard for me, but it was relatively easy at the same time, if that makes sense. Jerry Hughes, Shaq Lawson, Trent Murphy, and Daryl Johnson. I love Mike Love. <laughs> I love Mike Love. I love what he was able to do, what he's been able to do this preseason. But it'll be hard for me to to keep five defensive ends at this point. And being that Daryl Johnson, he's our he's our draft pick and. He's looking more and more like a steal of a seventh round pick. I don't know how this kid fell as much as he fell. Uh, Leslie Frazier was had an interview. He was, had his little press conference last week. And he talked about the Buffalo Bills being one of the only teams being at Daryl Johnson Pro Day. And I don't know how the hell that happened. But I'm happy as hell that it happened. So those four DEs, Jerry Hughes, Shaq Lawson, Trent Murphy, and Daryl Johnson, I have making the squad. The, the, the tough roster cuts was Mike Love and Eddie Yarborough. Eddie Yarborough has been on the team for the last couple of years, but I think we finally upgraded past the point where we can move on from Eddie Yarborough. The defensive tackles, I have four defensive tackles making the team. This was the easiest position to predict. Star Latoule, Ed Oliver, and both the Phillips boys, Jordan and Harrison Phillips. Moving on, I don't even think there's it's really need to, to indulge in conversation with the defensive tackle spot. Moving on to the linebackers, I have Tremaine Edmonds, Matt Milano, Zoe Alexander, Julian Stanford, Voshan Joseph, and last but not least, it was tough. It was definitely tough, but I went with Corey Thompson. Corey Thompson has shown very well. He's showing that he could be a viable backup. He's been in the with the second team a lot. And I know Maurice Alexander, the, the safety converted linebacker, he's he's versatile in what he's able to do. But I really like what Corey Thompson has me been able to show on the defensive side of the ball. And I got him making that last linebacker roster spot as uh, one of the backup linebackers. Moving on to safety. I have I have us keeping four safeties. I have us with the obvious, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. Then I have the veteran, Kirk Coleman. And I have my man, Dean Marlowe, man. Dean Marlowe, I know we got Jaquan Johnson. I know he probably can make the spot. He probably will make the spot. But in my opinion, Dean Marlowe has done nothing but impress me ever since he's came with the Buffalo Bills. So what I'm hoping is that Dean can, can earn his spot. And I'm hoping we can stash Jaquan Johnson on the practice squad. Uh, I like Jaquan Johnson. I really like him, but I really like what Dean Marlowe is is it has become for our Buffalo Bills team. So I have those four safeties making the roster. Moving on to the cornerbacks, I have Trey White. I have six cornerbacks making the team. I have Trey White, 
Levi Wallace, Kevin Johnson, Teron Johnson, Captain Munderland, and Siren Neal making the team. Uh, I have those six cornerbacks. It was tough for me to cut Lafayette Pitts because he does offer some versatility in the special teams department, but I think we got enough guys on the roster that can come in and excel in special teams, and I like uh, Siron Nil, his size, his versatility. I think we can put him in certain, certain packages. He's a cornerback, but he's a big He's a big corner. He can play some uh, some safety. He can play some linebacker in a big nickel situation. So I really like the the Siren Nils size and versatility. That's why I have him making the spot. And last but not least, the three specialists: Stephen uh, Money Hauschka, uh, Reed Ferguson, and I have Corey Carter, the punter, making the team. Um, we may try to look elsewhere, like we did last year when we took the the took. Uh, the New England Patriots punt off the practice squad. We may do something similar to, uh, similar this year. I'm not 100% sold on Corey Carter, but I do have him making the team. We may try to upgrade that, and we may try to upgrade other positions in free agency as well. I just got to go by uh, what we have on the team right now. So that's my 53-man projection. I felt that it was necessary for me to come out with the 53-man projection. Uh, the season, the preseason is winding down. We're into the last game of the season against the Minnesota Vikings where the starters shouldn't play much, if at all. We should have uh, a lot of the second and third teamers and a lot of guys uh, fighting for a roster spot, fighting for a job to come and make this team. Uh, let me know what y'all think. Let me know if y'all agree or disagree. And... Let me know how you feel about Andrew Luck's retirement. Um, are you uh, are you on the Doug Gottlieb train where you feel that it's a millennial thing and he just quit because he's mentally tired? Or do you believe, uh, like myself, that that's, that's just nonsense and Andrew Luck been been through a lot? And if you're going to blame anybody, you should be blaming the owner and that Indianapolis Colts organization. This is A. Rich, Akeem Richens. You've listened to The Blueprint, episode 13. Until next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.